Hello, friends, and welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Down. you got to talk about the offense still because it was a disaster on Sunday Night Football. But we've also got some injury news to get into. That's going to be the focal point here to start. The update on Tyron Smith. As Dr. Jerry Jones said, he did indeed suffer a high ankle sprain late in the fourth quarter on that final possession against the New Orleans Saints. Now, the injury, the good news is, it's not as severe as the Cowboys first feared. Remember, Tyron had to be carted off after he limped to the side and they carted him to the locker room there. The exact return date for Tyron is still not clear. I think they're going to categorize it more as a week-to-week type of injury. They do not think it is a long-term one. So I would anticipate Tyron does not play this upcoming week. And then they'll reevaluate the whole period. This is more of a Xavier Woods high ankle sprain than a David Irving type ankle sprain for those just some comparisons there. So with no Tyron Smith, Cam Fleming, as you saw late against the Saints, he is going to be the next man up. Now the Cowboys schedule here, I think sets up for a limited missed game here for Tyron. Shout out Bill Bates putting in fake news saying Tyron has not been a good O-lineman for three years. If you think Tyron's been bad, get your eyes checked. I don't know what to tell you. He's actually been very good. He's been hurt, but he's been great when he's been on the field. And the Cowboys' next five games, really the next five weeks here, home against the Green Bay Packers, I I would not anticipate having Tyron Smith for week five. Week six, we'll see. It might be a scenario where do they push Tyron or do they not push Tyron? Week seven against the Eagles, Again, we'll see. I would not anticipate Tyron being gone by the time we get to week nine based on what the Cowboys feel. Now, as we know, the Cowboys offensive line was bad against the New Orleans Saints. Look, a lot of money. It didn't work. Talk more about the offense as a unit here. But the Cowboys offensive line was pretty poor overall. Tyron Smith, one of his worst games overall. A lot of these, by the way, brought down by a bad run game and a a bad run defense because, frankly, I think they protected Dak Prescott well enough. That was more on the receivers not getting open. Connor Williams was actually the highest graded offensive lineman. Again, PFF is not the be-all, end-all. But these are not good offensive line grades. And I'll make note as well, by the way, when one part of the offensive line plays poorly, it's kind of a snowball effect. They all start to kind of struggle a little bit there. I don't know if we're at this point yet. It is still early in the season. We might have to have a discussion about Frederick and Zach Martin. Uh, Frederick doesn't quite look the same, maybe a half tick, half step slow there, coming back from the GBRA syndrome. And I think Zach Martin's back is bothering him. I think that's that's fair enough there. But with Tyron out, Cam Fleming is the next man up, at least for now, at left tackle. So how much do you trust him? Grade it for me on a scale of 1 to 10. Look, you're never really going to fully trust your backup left tackle. That's why he's the backup. If he had a great backup left tackle, he'd be starting for you somewhere. So I don't have a ton of trust in Cam Fleming. I am worried about it. Um, I will make note, though, if you're going to have to have a backup left tackle, Fleming is still one of the better ones. There's just a distinct lack of talent at the backup offensive line. So look, he'd start for the Dolphins in a heartbeat. He'd probably start for a couple teams out there and still not the most trustworthy guy there. All right, Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, this is an interesting one. His snap count went down, mostly because he was limited in the fourth quarter for the Dallas Cowboys, what Stephen Jones called a shoulder injury. Make note, it was the other shoulder, uh, which I, I guess is good. Jason Garrett said it wasn't serious. He did, he did have the sack in this one. That was a good sign there. For the year now, he's got two and a half sacks. I'm going to monitor it. Again, I'm not going to panic. He did come back in the game. That's normally your best indication as to how severe an injury actually is. But it's not great. Uh, Look, I I know there's been a lot of hate for Demarcus Lawrence. I think he's been fine. He's been, more importantly, a player. Let me put it this way. The best way to figure out if you have a good player or not is how do opposing teams evaluate your player? The opposing offenses continuously double-teamed Marcus Lawrence. That has at least helped free up Robert Quinn, who has looked fantastic, by the way. But Lawrence gets double-teamed as a defensive end about a third of the time. That's an incredibly high number. That's an indication of A, 
Cowboys, uh, uh, excuse me, opposing teams, don't worry too much about the interior pass rush, which is fair. It also sets up lots of one-on-one -on -one matchups, and Robert Quinn so far this year has taken advantage of it, coming in with the speed off the edge. There were some in the national media that thought Quinn was kind of washed up. That has not been what we've seen so far from Robert Quinn. Already three sacks. Could have been four. One was negated. If they can finish around 20 sacks total between Quinn and De De Demarcus Lawrence, that's a huge success. I will take that in a heartbeat. So we'll monitor Demarcus Lawrence, but we'll see what ends up happening there for Tank. I don't think it's a huge concern at this point. All right, guys, do me a favor and subscribe to us here on YouTube. Get us to 50K or I will pull a Zeke and go to Cabo, and I will hang out at, at the clubs and, you know, maybe work out, probably not, probably drink a lot instead, but I'll go to Cabo. So get us to 50K by mid-December, December, I'm, or I'm a holdout. I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to get there, so I'm going to go to Cabo instead. Link's there if you, if you need it, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys report. All right, Kevon Frazier, this one kind of under the radar right now, I think, but Frazier was quickly ruled out of the Week 4 game with a pectoral injury. Typically, a quick rule out is not good. That means they can quickly identify, yeah, this is a bad injury. And that's, I believe, what happened here for Kevon Frazier. Now, the Cowboys feared is a torn pectoral muscle, and they are hopeful that there's not going to be surgery. I am um, not really believable, uh, believing in that one there. I, I think you're going to see Kevon Frazier have to have surgery, and if that's the case, that would end his season. So what that means is, in theory, maybe a little bit more of Donovan Wilson at least being active for the Dallas Cowboys. That's the route I would go. I'm just curious how the Cowboys will approach it. And by the way, if they do place Kevon Frazier on IR, that would open up a roster spot for somebody. Maybe you bring up one of the corners, go six deep there. You probably want somebody for special teams. Maybe you bring back Covington. I don't know. I think, I think there are options there. We will monitor that. Nothing official on Kevon Frazier, but I'm going to guess that Frazier is pretty much out for the season with that pectoral injury. Unfortunate break for him. Today's show is brought to you by BetDSI. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code BOYS25. That gets you a $25 free play. If you spent it on the Cowboys beating the Saints, I'm sorry. I, I fell for that trap as well. I was wrong about the Cowboys winning this one. If you haven't done it yet, maybe you want to have a bounce back game against the Green Bay Packers for the Cowboys. Maybe you want to bet against the Redskins losing because they're a train wreck there. But let me know, or not let me know, go check it out. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code BOYS25 gets you that $25 free play. Let's talk about the offensive regression. A, a little uh, double meaning there because the offense regressed and the regression itself was also very offensive. The, the Kellen Moore play calling the game plan, I, it was bad. I, I see a lot of you guys there in, in the comments section. We're all on the same page here. It was terrible. It was nowhere near good enough. It was ultra conservative, which by the way, reeks of Jason Garrett. Here were some of the things, and we'll break a couple of these down more in depth here, things that have worked for the Cowboys this year that suddenly weren't available against the Saints. Dak Prescott running the football. One carry. Why? I don't know. Tony Pollard's snap count was two. Why? I don't know. Doesn't make sense. The screen game wasn't utilized whatsoever. Why not? I don't know. doesn't make any sense. The early down passes, more on this in a second, disappeared. The play-action RPO usage that was so effective early on this year was cut in half. All of these things that we know work, the Cowboys know work, they decided not going to use it this week. Here's the pass rate for the Cowboys, by the way, on first and second down. 69%, 64%, 53-50. to 50. I am concerned about that. I am actually very worried about that. My deepest, darkest fear right now is that the Cowboys' early down passing at the beginning of the year was a mirage because Zeke was rusty, and now that he's back, they're just going to keep running the football up the middle. Now, Jason Garrett said today he didn't fully agree that the Cowboys ran it more. That's a bold-faced lie. Uh, the, the numbers are right there in front of you. 
I don't know if Garrett's really bad at math or if he just is trying to say, oh, we were balanced. Balance for the sake of balance isn't actually balance. That's not what you actually want. Pass the football on early downs. The Cowboys repeatedly, when it was not working, ran the ball up the middle. The Cowboys on first down ran the ball 11 times. They averaged less than two yards per carry. When they threw it, it was over seven. The numbers don't lie here. It was a disaster by Kellen Moore and the game plan. And then the play action. The Cowboys cut it in half. And I have absolutely no idea why. The Cowboys entering this game ran play action among the top two or three in the NFL. And it worked because teams know, hey, A, they read run cues from the linebackers. It, it almost always works. Even if you're not running the ball that, that effectively. Because they, they ran play action on early downs early in the year. And teams fell for it. They busted out against the Saints at about half the rate. And surprise, it's also still really effective. There's no reason to not run play action upwards of 40%. And I see many of you mentioning it in the comments section here. It felt like Linehan called the game, right? It felt like a, a regression to the 2016, 2017, 2018 more so Cowboys offense. So with that in mind, who ordered the code Linehan? Let me know. Was this, was this a Jason Garrett mandate of, hey, we're going to be ultra conservative for really no reason? Or was Kellen Moore deciding on his own, hey, let's be conservative here and let's run the football a lot? I see some G's in there. I, I think Garrett is, is the one. This, the game plan itself, which has to come top down from a head coach to the OC, especially a first-year OC, a second-year coach overall, this felt like a we are on the road, let's play really conservative. Ladies and gentlemen, that is called cowardly coaching. You can't do that and expect to win games in the NFL. I see mostly G's in here. I, I agree. I think it's fair to put the blame on Garrett, even though you can definitely blame some of it on Kellen Moore. He gets credit for the first three weeks. He takes some of the blame for week four. Now, if you guys are playing fantasy football, maybe you're 0-4. Maybe you're 1-3. Maybe you drafted. I'm sure somebody out there did this. Maybe they drafted uh, Antonio Brown and Lamar Miller and Saquon Barkley and Cam Newton all on one team. That's very plausible. And maybe O.J. Howard, too, because he's killed me. Well, if you're having a rough go on fantasy, go play FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash chat sports. We, it resets each week, so if you have a bad week, that's okay. You can bounce back, still make a lot of money. You get 20 bucks free with your first $20 deposit at FanDuel.com slash chat sports. So with all the offensive talk in mind here, I come away with, with this opinion. It's really tough to blame Dak Prescott for week four. I think we're all in agreement. He was not set up for success by the play calling. Now, I don't want to give Dak a totally free pass here. He didn't have his best game. He missed some throws. I think the Randall Cobb touchdown throw is the one that sticks out most in my mind of, God, you wish he had it. It's a tough throw to make, make no mistake, but you wish you had it there. I, I can't just assign Dak the bulk of the blame here. I know that the, the raw numbers maybe aren't that great. The advanced stats are better here, though. So the raw numbers, 22 of 33 for 223, and the interception. But also, the interception, what are you going to do? Like... I mean, it was a, a jump ball hail at the end of the game. It doesn't really matter in the end. The next-gen stats, meanwhile, are much more, you know, favorable for Dak Prescott. The time to throw, 2.92, seventh highest in the NFL. That tells me, since there was only one sack, the offensive line blocked, the receivers were not getting open. The average depth of target was still 8.8. .8. I saw a lot of comments in our live stream of the game that, oh, it's a check down offense. The depth of target wasn't, though. 8.8, uh, .8, That's that was 7th highest in the NFL this past week. Air yards to the sticks was negative 0.8, so almost at the line of, or at the uh, first down marker, 12th highest. His X comp was plus 7.2, which actually dropped from last night, so that they made an adjustment there. That's tied for fourth. All of the, the major next-gen stats numbers say Dak Prescott was at worst a slightly above-average quarterback. I, I just, I know Dak wasn't at his best, not as good as he was in the first three weeks. I assign a lot more of that, though, to the Cowboys coaching staff and the play calling than I do Dak Prescott himself. So with that in mind, let me know in the comments section, what upsets you guys the most about the Cowboys loss in week four against the Saints? It's kind of a no-brainer for me. I think it's the play calling. 
I know you want to run the football, but you really can't keep running it up the gut over and over again when it's just not working. I, I think the coaching staff by far gets the bulk of the blame. That upset me the most, and it's what I'm most worried about going forward. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.